Okay. We're plugging the box in for the first time for the first part of the, uh, the show. I've tortured the rest of my family with this for uh, at least a week and a half, and now I'm showing it to Mike. So we're plugging the power in. Fire extinguishers are ready. We're ready to do it. Let's find the right plug in. Okay, we have AC power. We're ready to unveil the beast. He opens up the front. You've got a choice. You can leave that there or you can actually pop it straight off. I'll pop it off for demonstration purposes. Turn the radio on. Gotcha. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. This is the HF the 706. Uh, oh, sorry. Turn the power switch on first, which is located on the inside. Then turn on the 706. And then we've got the uh, airmail radio that's dedicated strictly to the airmail. On the inside we have two switches. One controls the red light and the other one controls the fan setup. I'll take the microphone up first. Now turn the fan on. We've now got a forced air fan um, sucking uh, the air through and keeping everything cool. I'll just turn the lights off and, uh, and show the, the functioning. It's a red light so it doesn't hurt your uh, eyes. And also the fan, which I chose to run manually, just in case I was on battery power and needed to uh, conserve. Uh, that way I don't have to rely on a thermostat. I can cut it off if I need to. The top of the radio, or the box, pops open as simply as that. And inside are the guts of uh, the box itself. This unit here is the uh, tuner, the Z100 tuner for the 706HF radio. And moving over here, we have a Kintronics um, uh, KP3 uh, uh, Mini TNC that's used for the um, ICOM 2200. And that runs the airmail program. The back side of the box, which I'll try to turn around for you here. This is where all the connections are made. Uh, we have a connection for an APRS antenna. I have uh, small Kenwood that I would put inside here uh, to run APRS with the uh, GPS unit mounted on top of the box. I have the main HF um, coax connection. I have a spare uh, coax connector which is going to be hooked up to the 706 VHF port. And then uh, finally the HF port. I've got external um, current connections for 12 volt and also a, um, a connection for a 12 volt in from say uh, a battery type uh, or a cigarette type adapter from a truck. I have a panel here for uh, the DB9 connector for the computer which runs the um, airmail program and it's connected directly to the, the TNC and of course the AC supply. On this side of the box which I can't rotate to at this point uh, there's a ground lug and that ground lug is going to be used for, of course, the HF and also uh, grounding of the tuner uh, to give us a good RF ground. And uh, that, in essence, is the box. Its composition is um, very, very thin aluminum over um, a very thin uh, plywood. Uh, the box was purchased as uh, a unit called a slip seat. And this is used by truckers uh, quite a bit who move from one vehicle to the other. It is configured to take two units, um, and in the trucker world, it would have um, a DIN type AM FM cassette CD type insert on this level, and also at this level, it would have uh, a CB radio. So it's meant for truckers who move from one truck to another on a frequent basis and don't want to leave their equipment in overnight. So basically, they call it a slip seat because you take the case and you slip it between the seats. And it's uh, made by K40. I'd be happy to supply the website. And uh, where I bought it, the, the cost of this unit was $119 US, not including any of the components but the box itself. It can, came with three speakers, one in the front, front firing, which I currently have hooked up to the 706, and two on either side. Uh, the speakers have been removed on either side because they were quite heavy uh, and they're used um, for stereo systems. So they're quite a heavy magnet. And they take up a bunch. Yes. Okay, we're back on. Ooh, psychedelic. That I had. Um, it's uh, small enough to, to fit into a box like this and was underutilized. So now I'm hoping that with this box and uh, mm. 
the ease of deployment, I'll be using this uh, setup more often, and I, I look forward to uh, to testing it out when I'm out in the, in the middle of nowhere. And then when you're done, you close the that little door there. Yeah, close the door. I take the microphone. Yeah. I shut off all the switches. Turn off the power. Got to turn the radios off first, but put the microphone on the inside. So, take the door, close the door. Of course, you have a choice of either having this open or not. It's not necessary to have it open because everything is connected. It's got twist style clasps, which make it might accidentally pop once you've twisted. It's locked and it's straight down. And there's my microphone hanger. And all sponsored by uh, Macintosh. Macintosh, Icon, <laughs> Asu, pretty much any other sticker I could find. I'll take stickers. Anyone donating stickers? Right here is your spot, right there. <laughs> One last thing. I am going to be mounting this. I hope I was recording. Right there. And what this is going to be for is many times at a campsite, I'm at a, a campsite, I've got a handheld. I'm always dumping it here and there. With this mounted here, I'll be able to mount this handheld right on the side of the box so that I can keep all my radio equipment together and I know where it is because I've lost this uh, a few times. And Hans Roy, you might remember yours <laughs> that you lost. It's, this one's not yours, by the way. Do you want to describe the back for us? Sure. Go ahead. Okay, I'll walk past. Yeah, you can walk past. Sure. Okay, I've got a BNC type connector at the top here for APRS. Um, I'll use my Kenwood D7A and um, a portable Garmin um, for beaconing APRS and I'll use the power. So BNC type connector at the top here for APRS. Um, I'll use my Kenwood D7A and um, a portable Garmin um, for beaconing APRS and I'll use the power supply from the box. Um, below here I have the um, um, coax connector for the um, 220 ICOM or 2200 ICOM um, running a windmill. And these two coax connectors are for the 706. One is HF and the other one is VHF UHF connection. These two ports here are for external connection, um, for running external um, uh, 12 volt accessories. This uh, connector right here is for um, installing a 12 volt supply. So you'd plug this into your um, uh, cigarette lighter uh, adapter and you'd be able to run this, run this unit at about 15 amps max. Um, from a, a cigarette lighter. And I would say that, you know, you'd run the 2200 at probably 20 watts and, and you'd be able to, you know, QRP on the 706 as well with it. And here's the fan. That's mounted and switched from the front. That's, I can turn that on or off depending on the temperature conditions. And then, of course, the panel for the, the DB9. Um, you'll notice that it's female or uh, female on the outside here. Uh, it requires a gender adapter to hook up properly to to either a USB cable or um, in some cases if you've got the right USB cable which I have here I've got a USB cable right here that hooks directly up to here and then I have a, a proper connection to my computer so I can run uh, windmill and again looking at the unit from the back side rotating this open opening the box you can see that I've tried to, to keep the cables as, as uh, tidy as I can. There's quite a, quite a bit as far as uh, the stuff that's in here. Um, I still need to install the 12-volt the battery and the um, power uh, charging unit for the battery uh, that will allow this to run uninterrupted in the case of the generator or AC supply is interrupted. And then that closes up after. Close straight up, and again, the importance of these types of, of clasps, either a two-stage clasp, like the Pelican case, or a twisting type of clasp, because the last thing you want to happen is for it to catch and open. At least this way, you can, if this pops open or catches something, it, it won't open. You can still lift this box straight up and down. You have to literally turn it before they'll open. So that's one thing I'd really recommend, no matter what type of box you use, either a two-stage clasp or a twist clasp.